Seek to call to order the March 9th meeting of the Peters Township Council. Mr. Flower, the roll call. Mrs. Merrill. Present. Mr. Steigel. Here. Mr. Arcuri. Here. Mr. Ball. Present. Mr. Burquist. Here. Mr. Kozer. Here. Mr. Lewis right. will not Post be here. Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of the minutes from the uh, February 24th meeting. So right. moved. Second. Uh, any uh, discussion? In favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Um, six nothing. Uh, special reports? There are none. Audience comments. If anybody in the audience has any comments on a non agenda item, please come forward, state your name, and make some comments. Seeing none, we will move on to unfinished business, of which there is none. New business, the first item is award of, of a construction contract for the Rolling Hills Drive. Mr. Lauer. So the 2020 uh, Peters Township operating budget included an, uh, an appropriation of more than $4 million for the construction of the Rolling Hills uh, Transportation Improvement Phase 2. Um, this project uh, involves the completion of Rolling Hills Drive and the construction of a signalized intersection at East McMurray Road. Um, we opened bids on February 21st. Uh, what you see on the screen is the bid tabulation from that. Uh, the low bidder is Ayla Veroni. This is the contractor who constructed the upper portion of, of the roadway. Uh, he is also the contractor uh, that is doing the site work for the school district. So from the standpoint of uh, coordination, it makes things a whole lot easier. Um, the other thing is uh, um, this firm's worked with us not only on uh, the Rolling Hills Drive project, they also have done other work, including the expansion of Peterswood Park, and we've always been pleased with their work and cooperation. So it's going to be my recommendation uh, that uh, the council award a contract to A. Liberoni uh, for two million three hundred seventy-nine thousand nineteen dollars and three cents. Move we award the contract for Rolling Hills Drive Phase Two Project A Liberoni for the amount of two million three seventy-nine oh nineteen oh three. Second. Is there a discussion? Just a quick question, Mr. Lauer. Did we have any change orders from them on Phase One? No, we did not. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six nothing. All right, the, uh, the next item is transfer of property to PennDOT as required by the <coughs> highway occupancy permits for Rolling Hill Drive. So one of the things that we have been relaying to you is that in terms of the highway occupancy permit, although we're not in possession of it yet, we are making progress. And what is left is a, a number of administrative um, uh, items. This item in particular is some indication that PennDOT um, has accepted the, the, the design that we're looking at because they've determined exactly what the transfer of the right-of-way should look like. What you see in front of you is just one segment of three drawings that uh, define the, um, the right-of-way uh, that's to be transferred. And, oh, here we go. It's, it's that yellow line that runs across the top. But like I say, this is just one sheet of three sheets. I think the important thing to take from it is, again, that we're moving forward um, with uh, PennDOT to be able to get to that that uh, issuance of that permit. So um, it's my recommendation that council authorize the transfer to PennDOT of the required right of way for the highway occupancy permit for Rolling Hills Drive. So moved. Second. Other discussion? I do have a question. So the part in the yellow is what we're giving to the state. Yes. So is there a corresponding transfer of the part that's being vacated to the township? There will be, but it isn't now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other discussion? No. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six nothing. Next item is the approval for reporting purposes of the Westbury Consolidation Plans as shown in drawings prepared by the uh, Red Wing Group dated August 6, 2019 for Environmentally Sound Enterprises, LLC. So at the December 16th meeting, council took action 
uh, on a consolidation plan to consolidate properties together as well as a, a um, uh, the final plan for the development. Um, subsequent to that, what was discovered is that there was a discrepancy uh, on the one corner of the property and that um, uh, a, a portion that's approximately somewhere between 15 and 20 feet wide um, was actually, that was included in the plan, was actually owned by an, uh, an adjacent uh, party. So um, as a result of that, what council needs to do is to reapprove the consolidation plan, and um, this is the same drawing that you saw in in 2019. That change is is would have actually occurred to this parcel here. But what the consolidation plan <coughs> continues to do, as it did then, is to take these numerous parcels and reduce them to three. Um, it's it's my recommendation that council reapprove the consolidation plan for for Westbury. So moved. Second. Any discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six nothing. Approval of Westbury final plans is shown in the drawings for this wedding date at August 21st. So this was the plan that the uh, the final plan that that was approved in December. Um, in this corner here. Uh, is where that change in that property line occurs. The impact is um, it, it uh, has resulted in reconfiguration of the lots in that area. The number of lots hasn't changed. Um, it's just that they're being reconfigured um, to, to accommodate that change. The one thing that I would suggest to you is just as when this was originally uh, approved, um, there are a number of conditions that um, that were placed, and the bulk of these are coming out of the um, uh, planning commission. Um, in addition to that, I, I think uh, council should uh, require the developer to execute a subdivision improvement agreement. This is something that's required on all all plans. Um, there um, are a number of outstanding fees and escrows that have. Um, occurred because of the review of, of this by the engineer and that those uh, should be paid. Um, there, um, there is a highway occupancy permit that is needed uh, prior to commencing of work and that should be a condition of approval. And finally, uh, a pre-construction meeting with the township staff. So, um, excuse me, and the financial guarantee of all improvements prior to the Peters Township releasing the final plan for recording and that no building permit should be issued until the earthwork on, on uh, Mervyn Drive for the turnaround is complete. With that in mind, and those the conditions of the Planning Commission as well as the conditions in the manager report, it's my recommendation that Council approve the Westbury final plan as shown on drawings prepared by Red Wings uh, Group dated February 4th, 2020. Discussion? I have a question. What, what's the uh, front building line? 20. 20. All, all these lots? This is well, district. this is a special zoning district. It's the village residential zoning district, and the minimum is 20, max is 25. And the open space is going to stay property association. We're not correct. Doing it, right? All open space will be HOA owned. We, the township will take ownership of the two detention facilities. You know, when we talked about this before, Mr. Lewis made an observation about the size of some of the lots and the idea that if people were going to try to do accessory buildings or pools or anything like that, it could potentially be a problem with that area. I've made it pretty clear personally that if we're doing this kind of modification to the setbacks, I think we need to not, we need to tell people up front, <coughs> don't ask. But there's some really funky shaped lots that are being put together here. I mean, that with that modification we just approved earlier. I mean, is the, do we do we counsel people about that? Or? Well, we do. They're, they're, they know that there's lot coverage and there's setbacks that 
Ryan Holmes, who will be the builder in this plan, will make sure that the house that's being sold for a particular lot can fit on the lot. I hope so. Because, I mean, it really affects the size of the building and everything else. It does. Mm -hmm. Now, is there um, going to be a cold? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Is there going to be a cold sack at the end of Barnett Drive? Because that plan shows it, but this one... There, no. there, there is one. Okay. That, that's a temporary cul-de-sac okay. as well. That, that could potentially head uh, north right. at some point in the future. And can you answer under number two? It says the bus stop be moved to the northern side of Westbury Drive. See on the top. Does that does that work? Is that for the school <laughs> bus? Well, there's a the sidewalk is on this side of Westbury Drive. Right. In the plan, the sidewalks are on both sides of the street. We the they're showing the bus stop on this side, the opposite side of the sidewalks. It needs to be over here on the sidewalk side. But is that school bus? Yes, okay. school bus. Well, school. because we have the whole issue of the Washington bus line coming through, and I wasn't sure what bus For now, it's just for school buses. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, well, I'll make a motion that council approve Westbury final plan is shown on drawings prepared by Red Swing Group dated February 4th, 2020 for environmentally signed enterprise, uh, enterprises subject to conditions recommended by Peters Township Planning as well as recommended by the Township Manager. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you see nothing. Next item is approval of amendment to the collective bargaining agreement between the International Firefighters Union and Peters Township providing for the position of captain. So as part of last year's budget workshop, uh, Chief McLaughlin proposed revising the organizational structure of the fire department, which included the creation of a position of fire captain. Um, we have adopted a, a job description for the position of fire captain, but before that working supervisor position can actually be filled, it requires an amendment to the collective bargaining agreement. So um, I've had a chance to sit down with uh, the representatives fr uh, from the uh, firefighters and we've come uh, to a tentative agreement that there would be an incremental rate of a dollar and a quarter per hour uh, for 2020 and 2021 and that that would go then to a dollar fifty per hour um, in 2022 and 2023. Um, I guess the thing that I would point out to you is that uh, when you compare that to like the upper, that would be the working supervisor <coughs> the department, that incremental increase is, is nowhere near what that would be if it were in, inside the police department. Um, the one thing I give a lot of credit to the, to the firefighters is that um, they are more than willing to work with us to be able to implement these kind of kind of things. So, uh, I had uh, two questions. Um, how does settling on that rate per hour then relate to the salary of the fire chief and the deputy? It will not impact them. Okay, because we've had but that I, issue. Well, I'm gonna say, and, and I will say that it will not impact them now. But, and I don't think it impacts the uh, fire chief's rate, but sometime in the future, uh, it might impact the deputy fire chief chief's rate, but it does not impact them now. Okay, and I had a question, and it might be for the chief. There's a comment about tra trading shifts, and I wondered, if, does it mean that only captains can trade with two captains? The, you can answer that if you want, but that language is language that's in the existing contract. The only thing that changed, we included the entire section. Yeah. The only thing that changed was the first paragraph. Yeah. The first paragraph talked about a fourth squad, which is a squad that was developed to fill in, there's a thing called a Kelly Day when people are yeah. off, to fill in for that Kelly Day. That Kelly Day will no longer exist because there'll be enough firefighters to be able to um, to do that and not have a special squad. Well, the reason I ask is that in the police agreement, if someone in another position isn't available and a, a regular patrol officer has to fill in, they're compensated. And so my question is about trading shifts. I just wanted to clarify. Oh. 
Okay. So, you know, it, it, are people going to be able to create ways to get paid more by trading ships? You could answer that, but I, I find that hard to believe inside the fire department because of that 24 hour schedule. Good question. General practice is we typically don't trade ships. People are afforded time off. They have vacation, holidays, personal time, things like that. If that time gets used and there's an extenuating circumstance for what we call is a one-for-one -one trade, it can be approved by the fire chief. But until those conditions are met, I myself and in previous administrations also we have not approved trades without those conditions being met. One-for-one -one trades are considered also not only the rank of what would be the rank of captain to captain, but paramedic for paramedic, advanced right. CMT for advanced CMT, so on and so forth. But general practice is we don't trade ships. Isn't it interesting in this that you're going to call up the captain to the attempt to get the fill in with another captain, or how would you handle it? I mean, I understand going to daylight if there's no captain, it's fine because you would be there, but there's officers, but uh, in the evening hours, overnight, how's the call up? From a cost benefit standpoint, I'm not worried about the cost benefit, I'm, I'm worried about operation. Um, it, it would come at a more significant cost, again, that not being the issue. You're trying to work with consistency. What we're going to have in place is the ability for the senior firefighter on that ship to take those duties that are operated from day to day. Outside of those duties, there are ancillary duties that that dollar twenty-five encompasses. One of them might be training, one of them might be community risk reduction, and things like that that captains will be responsible for. But inside of a 24-hour shift, the, the captain's going to be responsible for the, the duty time sheet, shift work paperwork, reporting all, all the mishaps and everything to the deputy chief and ultimately the chief. So what's negotiated, Mr. Lauer, correct me if I'm wrong, is 50 cents an hour? Like I say, what, what's... So it's just there is a, but, you know, like just as there was in the fire department an officer in charge, there will in essence be, for lack of a better term, a firefighter in charge. They will not be compensated at that same rate because uh, part of the, the thought of the captain is that not only will they have charge of the ships, but they will also have a special projects in, that, that they may work on outside of that. So that firefighter in charge may assume responsibility for the ship, but not all these other projects. So they're going to be compensated at a much lower rate than the, than the captain. And some of that language has to do with, too, now that we're in the near future of having that 10 firefighters, we're eliminating that fourth squad or that fourth shift. We're just going to go to ABC shift to rotation of 24, 48. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'll make a motion that council authorize the appropriate township official to execute the amendment to the existing labor contract with the International Firefighters Union for the purpose of instituting the position of fire captain. I will second that. Okay. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Six nothing. All right. Payroll and bills. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I did review the payroll and bills. Um, fund a uh, few things that were in there that people would be interested in, higher payments. We did purchase the property for the fire station. Um, Liberoni's payments for phase one and payments to Mackin. Um, I move that these be approved as submitted. I'll second. Good discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Correspondence? There is none. Minutes of... Uh, other boards and uh, commissions, uh, anybody want to discuss anything? I had two questions, if I could. Under park and rack and observation, I wanted to commend them, uh, the board for, um, they updated the usage policy regarding prohibiting vaping and e-cigarettes, adding that to the regular tobacco and alcohol mm -hmm. prohibition. So I thought that was very insightful for them to remember to update that. Um, so I wanted to just, say that, that that was a good idea. Um, and what's going to come back to you uh, very <clears> shortly, <throat> um, Michelle has been uh, tasked with uh, <coughs> taking all of the policies that exist in the uh, Recreation Department and consolidating them and into a form that we've been using, and that should come back to you shortly for Council to take action on. Thanks. Um, and one thing under cable board, that in the minutes there was something about a recommended name change for the group, and it says it was submitted and they're waiting for a response, and I just 
I happen to have been at a meeting when that was initially discussed. I wondered, did they submit a name, and is it in your hands, or where are we with it? I'll have to get back to you. Okay. 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 Anything else? All right. Miscellaneous. Um, a couple things. While well, we have Chief McLaughlin here, I just before we go do this, I just want Council to be aware because you may get surprised when you see what you get. <coughs> You know, we have the old fire truck, and it needs to be sold. And the fire truck is 33 years old, is that correct? Um, so we're gonna sell this truck, and the, it may look shiny, but it's probably not gonna get you much more than five or $10,000, um, because it has little, little value at this point. But we are gonna go out and, and sell that, that truck. I think the thing to keep in mind about the truck is that in essence, the township's already sold it once. We sold it to the volunteer fire company who bought it as a reserve uh, piece of apparatus and we were the recipients of that payment. So um, we have um, March 28th down as the township tour date. The only reason I bring this up is that I know, now know that Mr. Lewis and Mr. Kozer are not available on that date. And my question to council is, do you want to proceed or is your preference to find a date when everybody could be there? I think we should try to find another date when everybody's available. What's the date that you picked? Uh, the date that was that we all agreed to was March 28th. Good. So. And I'll take responsibility for that because my wife had planned a weekend away for us that weekend and didn't tell me. TMI, TMI. And, um, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, no, we're just, we're just try, we are just going to Amish. We're just going to Amish country. Look for furniture. Okay? That's all we're doing. Uh, sure, if it's discussed a financial settlement. Yeah. I tell you what, I I I will send out um, uh, an email to council, and we'll see if we can find a date that works for everyone. Oh, you're negotiating for a, a new fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we talked about um, with uh, at the school board meeting was this idea of an entrance gateway to the uh, high school and the park property. Uh, and I wanted to, to discuss that a little further with council from two aspects. One, it is my opinion, given that we're going to be in the process of revising the, the sign ordinance, that this would be the time if, in fact, you wanted to provide the ability to do that type of signing sometime in the future, this would be the time to, to make the accommodation with inside the ordinance. So unless council tells me otherwise, we're gonna proceed on the basis of working with the school district to come up with some criteria that we can incorporate into the ordinance that would allow this to occur at some future date if both parties decide they wanna do it. The other thing is, if you want to explore- talking about the entrance sign on on East, McMurray. East McMurray Road, going into the high school and the um, and the park property. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't understand why they would want to put their other sign on top of the hill up by the school. And, and I, I mean, who's going to see it up there other than what, someone going by up there? But they're going to need a sign further up to direct people into the area where the well, public would go. Would it? No, no, I wouldn't think so. Yes, but well, then again, perhaps that's where the electronic sign would be. And, well, from what I understand. The comment that, that they didn't want to spend the money to me. You're spending a hundred million dollars. What, what do you think the sign's going to cost? Well, and that was my going to be my $5, second. Five thousand dollars, ten thousand. Well, the sign's going to cost what it's going to cost, whether it's up on the hill or down there. The yeah, I know. How much does it cost I to run the power was, supply down? Oh, well, that was ridiculous. Know. But well, I don't know that it, uh, just personally, and for people who weren't at the uh, workshop, the entrance. Uh, what Mr. Lauer proposed was to take signs on either side of the entrance to help identify the township side of the property in the school district and make it kind of a maybe a stone or a monument sign, not necessarily electronic. Because I, I do agree that they're going to, I think they need a sign further up anyway. But I think that's a nice look and it doesn't have to be huge, I, but it's a gateway to new, new construction. And I think it would be important. Yeah, and the point that I was trying to make uh, at, the, at the meeting was I think the reason why you want to do it is beyond the the aesthetics of it i think you want people to understand they're entering a special place and that it may cause people to drive through that that space differently than they might if they just simply perceive it to be a public road which it is um, 
So the, the, the second thing is, you know, I, I had a chance to talk to uh, the architect for the school district. He's also the architect for, for the township with regard to the buildings that we're building, is to look at the possibility of providing us some samples and cost of doing this kind of thing. If you want to do that, it's going to cost a few thousand dollars to develop that, that scheme. Is that something we're willing to do? I, I, I think it would make sense, quite frankly. I am. Yep. I would agree, and I think he needs to also look at what should be on the center church entrance side. Yes. Because, again, it's the same concept <clears throat> of, of introducing people to, where, to that right. site. Yeah, I would think that you would want to mirror what's on the bottom, but not necessarily not necessarily the scale of what's on the bottom. That's what I would think. Yeah. Exactly. The bottom yeah. just needs to have similar signs on both sides and, and a similar version of that on the top. Top. Yes. Okay. I agree. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and and we're gonna we're gonna work on that. So. Okay, Mrs. Merrill, you got an item. I just wanted to do a public service announcement. Um, it's come to my attention that um, the Peters Pantry is going to be in need of uh, volunteers to continue running it. Um, many of you may know that the Washington County Food Bank has a food bank site here in Peters. It's run out of Peace Lutheran, and it's been run wonderfully for five or six, maybe longer years by Laura Norton, who is um, going to be stepping down. There is, it's really a job for two people. She has a partner who, uh, they split clerical duties and operational duties. But um, they're having a little bit of trouble finding somebody. And so I, I suggested that I could make a plea, tell people that it's, it, there is an opening. Um, she is very well organized. They have a lot of things set up. The actual on-site time is usually two days once a month when they do set up a the site and then do distribution. There is work in between, but it's you don't have to be on site. You can do a lot of it from home. If you're interested, um, you can check out the Peter's Pantry Food um, website, or you could go to the Washington County Food Bank website. But um, unfortunately, if they don't find people, the county may make a decision to pull that site from Peter's. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. And um, if anyone has the interest and the ability and the time, please think about um, volunteering for that. Good. Thank you. Okay. One other thing, Mr. Chairman. I noticed today on the way home that for about the third time in the last two weeks, there's been a wreck at the intersection of Center Church and 19. And you know we had the fatality there a couple weeks ago. And it looks like tonight was a similar thing. At least it's way I could tell was someone coming across from Harvey's trying to get to 19. They got hit by somebody coming north on 19. Have we ever given any thought to doing something about that entrance down there, making that only right in, right out, or something like that? Because it's getting to be increasingly dangerous trying to get off of 19, across 19, on the center church. And next year when they open the school, I don't know what Well, turn see, and I, I well, actually on the, on the township tour, one of the things that I wanted to do was to go down Center Church Road and stand there with council. I think making a left-hand turn out of Center Church Road uh, to go south is something that we might want to consider prohibiting and encouraging people to go down Willhaven to go out of the light. You're going to have 400, 400 parking spaces for high school students. Not all of them are headed that direction on Center Church Road. In fact, I would think the majority are coming back to East McMurray Road. But you're going to have a sizable number of kids going every day, and I don't think you want people making left-hand turns out of Center Church Road. I, I agree with that. I, I think, though, you'll get people cutting through the back of whatever that strip center is. They already uh, do. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz, it's, it's really no different than Hayes and Washington and St. Clair. It's the same setup there. But, but or we, or what if we make it one way? Or we make that span one way from 19 up to Wilhaven? I don't know, but we're, we've got Madri looking at it, but we're going to talk about it when we have the township to work. Yeah, I do think it's a good idea. Okay, anything else? Uh, Mr. Bob, since we were talking about traffic, um, I had sent an email, I think, to you about the uh, bill about the radar um, for the state and Apparently this bill is now up, going to be up in front of legislation again to enable our police force to use radar. 
would council collectively want to send a recommendation? I mean, I've already emailed my representatives and other people if you're interested in having our police have radar, please look at that. But would it be of any benefit for council to send a letter to I, your representatives? Uh, I, sp I uh, talked to Representative Mihalik, I talked to Representative Kale, I talked to Representative Ortita and, and uh, Senator uh, Bortolotta. Mm -hmm. uh, just you know, did a little poll on it. Um, there are some, some differences of opinion right at the moment on the bill as it exists. Okay. And um, I think that th there, there's two different versions of it apparently in, in the House. Mm -hmm. uh, I think right at the moment, it would probably be better to, to let them resolve the differences uh, you know, and, and come, come up with a, a clean bill, see what they, what they want to do. I, I think that it would be a good idea overall to, to have it. I think we need to figure out, let them figure out what it is that they want to do, if that makes sense to everybody. Well, I can agree with that. I think it's just that they, I would like them all to know, and that's why I emailed that yeah, I, I think, think it's an important yeah, I think thing. I think if, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, get hold of, uh, I mean, our representative is uh, Representative Mahalik and State uh, Senator Avena, so uh, you know, if wanted to get hold of them and let them know that, you know, we support the idea, that would be certainly I know that Chief good. Grimes has. Pardon? Chief Grimes has asked him. Oh, Chief has, Grimes has, has wish, for it. wished for that moment. <laughs> yeah, that's on his wish list. Yeah, I mean, I think right now it's it's in the in the process of being cleaned up. So. Okay, thank you for that insight. I, I just have one one quick thing. I took my 90 year old mother to the uh, Jefferson Historical Society on Sunday. Uh, they had a Cannonsburg artifacts exhibit uh, at the Elks Club in Cannonsburg. And she wanted to exhibit some of the pottery that my grandfather made in Cannonsburg pottery. But anyhow, of all the exhibits they had there, there was a lot of neat stuff, uh, one of which was a map of Peter's Township uh, showing the original uh, uh, allotment of the various parcels from 1780s. Have you ever seen this? Yes. Was you know, part of Virginia? You no, know, like I say, when, when the line was struck to make Washington County part of um, Pennsylvania, um, in recognition of 13 colonies, there were 13 municipalities created. One of those was Peters Township. Well, it was a cool map, and I just yeah. didn't know whether we have that. I took a picture of it. I don't know whether we could have it reprinted somehow, but I thought it was uh, a really interesting because uh, uh, obviously the Wright Farm is one of the ones yes. that I didn't recognize uh, very much any of the other names, but they're all big partials. I mean, they're all, you know, 125 to 300 acres. Yeah. Okay. My mother's exhibit was well received. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay, anything else? Uh, items for the next agenda? Comments? Okay, we have an executive session dealing with some legal and some personnel matters. Other than that, we are adjourned.